Welcome back to another video, Hades here. In my visual library video on skulls, a few of you asked in the comment section if I can make a video explaining how to do the box rotation exercise that I showed in the beginning, as you can see here. It's a fairly simple exercise, but I want to give uh, as much information as I can uh, about it. So uh, forgive me if this video turns out a bit longer than it should be. After I explain how to do the box rotations, I'm going to show you some further exercises that you can do. And as long as you have a basic understanding of how perspective works, you can do this exercise. Okay, so first thing we're going to start off with is uh, the simplest rotation, in my opinion, and that is the front view eye level rotation. So I'm starting off here by drawing the top down view. And one thing we need to notice, which I'll talk about in a moment, is how the box is coming closer to us as it's being rotated. And what I'm doing now is dividing the box into quarters. And what I'll do is, is I'll use these quarters to help me draw the boxes. On the first rotation, the front face goes from taking up four quarters to taking up three quarters, with the remaining quarter revealing the side face. And then, on the second rotation, the front face now takes up two quarters, or half, and the side face takes up a half as well. And then finally, the third rotation, we have one quarter for the front face and three quarters for the side face. And then since it's a cube, the next rotation will take us back to the uh, first box. So I recommend just trying this first and just getting used to those quarter divisions because it's going to set us up for the rest of the exercise. Now, some of you may be thinking, is this completely accurate? Well, no. Is it close enough? Yeah. You know, when it comes to drawing, at least for me, as long as I can get it to be believable, that's all that really matters to me. Okay, now remember when I was talking about how the boxes come closer to us as they rotate, you can account for this by making sure your lines uh, change height. So here I've labeled the tallest line for each box and I've numbered the sides, the vertical sides from one to four, uh, with one being the tallest, so you can see how this works. And also notice how the second and fourth boxes are mirror images of each other. Okay, let's get into the full exercise. So we'll have three more rows and columns of rotations. And like you just saw, we're going to use those quarters to help us with these rotations. So I'm going to redraw those eye level rotations and start with the rotation downwards. Some of you will notice that this is the same as the eye level rotations, just rotated 90 degrees, but almost the same if I rotate the top row towards the right rather than to the left. Moving on to the second column, the downward uh, rotations are getting a bit more tricky but I'm relying on my quarter divisions to guide my proportions. So you can see how the corner that's closest to us will line up with the quarter steps. And I'll highlight this in a moment. And this will be consistent throughout the rotations. As you do this, be sure your lines are converging. I think that's quite a common mistake, is to leave your lines parallel. And if this all seems a bit complicated, uh, don't worry, this is just to guide you. Um, if I was to give this as an assignment, I'd probably have you do it this way first, at least once, uh, so you understand how everything works. And then I'd have you do it again without these guides. And now you can see how those corners would line up uh, with the quarter steps in this arrangement. And of course, the horizontal divisions still apply here. And again, make sure your lines are converging. When I'm usually drawing boxes, I like to start with the top plane or bottom plane first. And the way I'm sketching here is how I usually draw boxes, you know, keeping it a bit loose. I'm not really obsessed with getting the perfect line on my first try. I mean, there is no perfect line, is there? But if you do have a tendency to undo too many times, maybe do this exercise in your sketchbook with a ballpoint pen or some other permanent media. You do want to be confident in your lines, but don't feel like you need to be King Jungi or something before you can move on. And if I'm drawing a box at eye level, I'll usually start with that tallest line first. 
If you're wondering about other angles, the same idea still applies. You can use the quarters to divide up the proportions. And as you can see here, um, I mean, all I did here was um, copy my original cell boxes and just flip and mirror them just so you can see how it looks. And because I did just uh, transform them, the boxes facing up do have their third vanishing point above the canvas now. Once you're somewhat comfortable rotating boxes, you can try doing this with an object inside the box. I've been working on character design, so I thought I'd try and uh, do this with a triangular head. You know, when you're designing characters, you work with all sorts of shapes. I haven't shown here, but before you do this, it's usually a good idea to establish a front view and side view of your object, just to establish the shape and proportions. Of course, the more complex the object is, the more difficult it will be to do this exercise. And so I recommend that you uh, simplify objects into primitive forms as best as you can. Uh, for example, um, if I didn't do this with a head, I probably would have done it with a foot. Um, and if I was doing that, I would just break the foot down into the simple forms first. Right, it's a lot easier to add details once you've established the larger shape. And I'm not sure if it shows here, but um, I did find this quite difficult. You know, at least with the skulls, I can just reference, well, I did reference a 3D model. But with this, it's, uh, you know, it's an idea from my mind that I have to create in perspective. And that's why my lines are all sketchy, because I'm trying to figure this out as I go. But uh, it's, it's really good to do because now I can see which angles give me the most trouble. If you just want to continue drawing boxes, you could always try these as well. You could try cutting shapes into your boxes or creating holes in them, stacking them. Feel free to be as creative as you like. But be sure that you don't stay stuck drawing boxes. Be sure to apply your skills. If you have a look at the cars that I drew on my Instagram, I really started off because I wanted to practice uh, drawing my boxes and cylinders. And so I thought cars would be a great way to do that. And the final result was creative. And so maybe that gives you an idea of what you could do to practice your cylinders and boxes. So that's it for this video. If you found this useful, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to keep up with the rest of my art development. You can find my creative work on Instagram in the description down below and I'll see you all in the next one.